Greetings from Milo, Tanzania. Well, we've now been in our new luxury house for three months uh, with electricity, running water, showers. But because June is the coldest month here, we do appreciate a fire in the evening and a hot water bottle in bed at night. Our garden is ready for vegetable planting. We still get countless gifts of fruit, vegetables, chickens, and more recently, rabbits. I hope you can see Peter and Belinda in their enclosure and the hutch finished, ready for Belinda's babies, due any time. Another project in the village that we're involved with is the beekeeping, which was started by the American Peace Corps, unfortunately all withdrawn to the USA due to corona. We've continued to support that project through Milo Town funds and we're looking forward to a good honey harvest this year. Schools were closed three months ago due to Corona, but they're due to reopen on the 29th of June. So I will be back to full time formal English teaching. But during the, the, the last three months, I've been tutoring students in three groups at home um, in English. Uh, of course, they also stay on and play games, so it's really been back to youth work for me. And some of them are going to continue to come once a week for games and cake. As for me, my teaching outlet is the hospital, along with plenty of complicated clinical work and difficult pregnancies. The ultrasound project is going very well. Many of you supported that. And each month we visit five villages in succession looking for the expected date of confinement, which is really important if caesarean section is planned, and also for complications in the pregnancies. Most of the days I scan other problems, liver abscesses, swallowed coins, an infected leopard bite, and traumatized testicles in footballers. I think you get the general idea. Once a month we drive to Njombi where Adrian does a clinic in the Anglican Health Centre and I can enjoy some shopping for things I can't get here in Milo. We also stay two nights in a luxury hotel which gives me a really nice break from cooking. During that time we see Bishop Matthew and Polycarpo and I asked Bishop Matthew what particular concerns he had and what he would like me to pass on in the way of prayer and support to St Asaph. And he was telling me about a piece of land that the Diocese Hanal has of 70 acres where he plans to develop an avocado farm. There's a big market for avocado fruit and avocado oil via Kenya to Europe. And in about three or four years when the harvest starts, it should produce a nice regular income. He also has another patch of land with, which he bought with money that Bishop Gregory gave him where he plans to grow eucalyptus and pine for timber. I have occasional opportunities for preaching, which is still very difficult through an interpreter and through a thick cultural lens. And unfortunately, the godly play has been put on hold. We were going to teach Sunday school teachers, but because of Corona, that's not possible. Aside from the pandemic, God's timing is still something that we're learning to get used to. African sense of timing is a factor, as is the unpredictability of emergency admissions. But we do find that when we go with the flow and accept what's happening, that God seems to have plans for us and we see a future with hope.